This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Hey guys, it's time to talk tech. Get geeky. It is Mike Sorg. It is the awesome cast here live in uh, Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. With the H, that's important. Don't book the wrong hotel, okay? Pittsburgh, Kansas is a whole different thing. Trust me, I was just there for four days. (laughs) Wonderful, wonderful chicken. Uh, With me is the gadget guru from deep, deep... Uh, oh, uh, high atop, as you can hear, see the light on his window. Uh, in Studio C is John Chichilla, the gadget guru at Big Bank International Incorporated Esquire. I was going. I thought you were going to say deep data. Deep data. Deep, deep mining. In data. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and also with us back on the show has been a good while. Thank you for uh, hopping in here last minute here. But uh, Will Rutherford with Panel Riot, and I, uh, I. Do, do you, you're doing other things in kind of a techie thing? Uh, I don't know. We we didn't vet. Do you want to tell people what you're doing these days? Hey, what's up, guys? Thanks for having me back on the show. Yes, it is true. I am doing many many things, mostly just panel riot, and also I have a day job. That I guess we can talk a little bit about the day job. I held a live event um, that Missy was on the panel discussion for. It was social media for business. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I was I was watching a little bit of the stream while I was waiting for uh, a friend to pick me up in Dallas that night. So yeah. it was kind of cool to uh, touch back, big base back in there. But the video, uh, at least the the raw stream of that, is up on Sidekick Media Services uh, Facebook page, so you can see uh, the, w- 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 what happened there. You had a fancy bow tie, I understand. I did have a fancy bow tie, and I got a lot of shit for it at work. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> really? really? Yeah, because I've got one boss who likes it when I wear suits, and I have another boss who does not like it when I wear suits. Mm. So I try and keep my bow ties to special occasions. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Also with us, uh, as I said, on that panel, uh, producer Missy with us as well. Hello. 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 Uh, joining us as well on keeping things straight. Uh, thank you for that. You guys can check out the Awesome Cast. You can check out everything going on at awesomecast.com. And you can also follow us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and video versions on the YouTube and the Facebook page for those versions of the show. You can check us out live at live.awesomecast.net or just to check out our Facebook page in the stream there. Uh, like the page. You'll get notifications. Turn those on in video. You'll let, it'll let you know when we go live. 7 p.m. Eastern every Tuesday, unless I have traveling issues. Uh, RiversEdgePGH.com. Thank you so much to those guys for uh, carrying us uh, streaming uh, live every Thursday, 8 a.m. after Funny Money. Keep an eye out. I believe that is going to change here in the coming weeks. I think this month they're making the change. And also our friends at the 405Media.com that have been putting us on at 9 a.m. Pacific time, noon uh, Eastern time over the 405media.com. Thank you so much for those guys supporting the show and putting the stream out there uh, uh, so, mu- uh, so much. Also, uh, thanks to our Patreon supporters, Matt Weller at the Coffee Club $5 level, Matt underscore Weller on the Twitter, as well as Michael Fedor at Mike Fedor Show on the Twitter at the Fan of the Show dollar level um, uh, uh, per month. Uh, you can support the show too at patreon.com slash awesomecast this week. Uh, you'll hear what Will sounded like mysteriously uh, over <laughs> as we brought him on we, the air. It was a, couldn't it, figure it out. It was, a techno- it was a podcasting technology mystery. It's like he was a whole different person. So I kind of wished it kept going so we could just do the <laughs> podcast on that voice. So so we just need you to make the voice. Um, yeah. Anyway, so let's get into our awesome things of the week. Kind of short on I'll time. Just talk to- like this for the whole episode. That's pretty much. That's pretty much what you sounded <laughs> I need, like. I need you to help me load this couch into my van. <laughs> Chilla, what is your? <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> Chilla, what is your awesome thing of the week? R- real quick before I get started, because I was I was out of town. Was there a replay of that panel anywhere? Oh well, it's it, it's the stream is still up on uh, Sidekick Media Services Facebook page. Yeah. 
Okay, cool. And, and? And we are working on and. a finalized, finished, nice and pretty polished version that we're yep. also going to be yep. sharing out. A little bit better audio and everything, so uh, okay, so correct. keep keep an eye out for that as well. So. I actually spent most of my day working on that audio. So Nice, nice. <laughs> All right, Shilla? So much like yourself, um, I found myself in the airport um, jet-setting around the globe, um, primarily to Nashville over the weekend. Ra- and I had a around, layover. around the globe to Nashville. Yes, uh, uh, via via LaGuardia in New York. So um, you kind of go left to go down and to the right. Yeah. Um, so so one of the things I realized when I was in the airport, I'm like, oh, depending on the length of the flight and if I'm on the tarmac for too long and blah, 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 blah I plan on using my phone to watch some movies and stuff that I downloaded. I'm like, I, need, I didn't pack an extra battery um, to plug into the phone. So I actually went over to one of the little kiosk areas and found the uh, a place that had the Apple battery case, which, so I, I mean, I have a number of these little battery packs that you can carry around. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're great. Um, this one is 4,000 milliamp hours, but I'll tell you what the battery pack on the, Apple device, like the one that's built in, so you can see the case bumps out a little bit there. Mm-hmm. Um, I got like three days of heavy usage before oh, I was yeah, before I, before I was down to zero percent. I mean, I was watching movies, I was on Facebook, I was taking pictures with family, I was taking live a bunch of video. What was the brand of that case it, again? It, it's the, unfortunately it's the Apple one that Apple makes for the uh, phone. Uh, okay. <clears throat> The other thing, and I've had other cases um, that I've liked, but this one actually has lightning on the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. Um, So you don't have to carry an extra um, micro USB along with you to charge some other manufacturer's case. This passes right through. So when I got home and put it in a dock, I didn't have to to get all finicky with it. So I I, got to say, like, I, I did plug it in at work. But when you when you swipe down and you look at your batteries, um, like my case is at seventy nine percent, and when the case isn't depleted, the phone stays at one hundred percent. So my phone's at one hundred percent, and my case is at seventy nine percent. Now, now, I, like I said, I did charge it before I left work today, but I mean, I have I'm super impressed with the battery life. The, the only thing I will say that's a little weird is to get the case on and off, you have to like open the top of the case like this and then slide your phone out. Hmm. Um, and then because the way the lightning port at the bottom lines up, it slides in and then the case kind of clips on the top. <clears throat> I was one of those people trying to push it into the case and the guy's like, no, 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 no. The top kind of flips, but it's all silicone. So it, it's just kind of flexible. The, some people complain about the battery bump. Um, like with some cases I've lost like a bar of signal depending on, depending on what the case is made of because of where the battery falls, it's not on any of the antenna lines. And because the case is silicone, it, it's has no problem or, or no real interruption with cellular signal. So I'm super happy with the case. Very well designed. I'm interested to see because your phone gets only so many charge cycles i'm wondering if it ha- this case will actually save my phone from having to have a battery replaced at the three-year mark mm-hmm. because we keep while i get it while i upgrade every year we keep our phones for usually four to five years and use them for other things and then they're out and about that we just pull the sim cards from them and put them on wi-fi and then use them out and about but i'll be interesting to see how this case plays into that interesting and it works with the iPhone 6, 6S, and 7. Nice. So, and so far, so good. And that's the official Very one? Cool. And you you say you got one in the airport? Like you didn't get uh, uh, the, the, the airport tax too bad on it? I didn't get the air. It was, it was an extra 10 bucks. Okay. All right. Yeah. So it wasn't. It was... For for what I... For when and what I needed it for, it was worth it. You, you know, the I... Other, ha- the other cool... Go ahead. Go ahead. I would say I the, had... The a- other cool thing is... <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> No, <laughs> podcasting chill go ahead seriously you go first okay so i'll go so the other cool thing is is when you plug it in you know how you normally get like the power and how much how much how much 
battery you have, it actually puts two power bars to show you how much the case is charged and how much the battery is charged because it'll actually charge both devices simultaneously. Nice, nice. So it actually knows. Kind of like how how when I, I connect my Bluetooth speaker, I get that battery too mm-hmm. kind of thing. So I, I, I like that things are being smart with that. So cool. Uh, no, I had a, a similar uh, experience where I, I went and realized I did not bring an iPhone cord. So I walked across to the Hudson News and, and I'm looking at uh, Belkin, Belkin uh, uh, cords for... Uh, for let's see, they started at thirty to thirty-seven dollars for a, a lightning cord, uh, and Jeez. I was like, "All right, let's see." There's a Best Buy kiosk I passed. I went down the way, and they had Insignia brand, which is the Best Buy brand, for fifteen dollars, which yeah. was five dollars off. It was on sale on like clearance out of the out of the. It was just cool to get like you know the arm and getting, and I think I, I even put it in, on my Instagram story because it was just cool. That I was like, I'm getting a, a like. The, the thing out of a kiosk with the little robot arm and everything. And it was kind of a cool experience. So uh, as much as I, I vowed never to buy something like that at an airport, because holy crap, I don't want to pay that, that, that airport tax. I, I tried not to eat food there so much. So, yeah, but, um, my awesome thing of the week is not that is not using the Best Buy kiosk is uh, this little thing is uh, if you're on video here, uh, this is the Samsung touch controller for the gear VR. I'm still rocking the uh, 6S and SDK that uh, Chilla uh, uh, gave me the hand me downs uh, for a while ago. I'm still having fun with that. Uh, but my, my really cheap gamepad didn't seem to work anymore with it. Uh, it wouldn't sync up. It doesn't seem the power on. So I was like, well, I, I heard and I kept seeing the new insignia for like this was being optional and required. And and it looks like most of the games that used gamepad will also use this as well. So I have buttons uh, to to uh, uh, work with things. Right. Um, I've only really played with uh, one thing other than the interface with it. I, I synced it up today, tried it out a little bit. Um, there is a gunslinger game and I'm trying to get the video. Unfortunately, it's not it's not popping on dead and buried is the game it's a it's a free one and i think i think oculus put this out as kind of a showcase <coughs> video as well i don't know why it's not loading but um it's a gunslinger game where there are zombie cowboys and everything like that um it's and i've used the vibe before don't expect like this being exactly where you feel like your hand is is where you see your hand in the game kind of situation Think about it along the lines of a Wiimote. Everybody remember how how sensitive those were back in the day? Uh, the original Wiimote I'm talking about. Uh, so you do have, and, and you do a lot of the same um, calibration with it. The figure eight, you set it on a table so it kind of knows which way is up, and, and you go from there. I actually, when I did, on my, on my personal page, and actually I'm going to go ahead and share this to the... Um, I'm going to share this to the Awesome Cast Facebook group if you guys want to join over there uh, and and check the video out because you can see your hand and you see the gun um, and and it's you're shooting with the the trigger on the end here and you actually just flip the gun because it's a six shooter so you just kind of flip your wrist sideways and it reloads the gun so it's real intuitive as far as that goes but when I went to put the video up um, it threw the sync completely off which was really weird. <laughs> Uh, so I had to point like a little bit sideways to point forward in the game. Uh, just it just fell out of sync because I, I probably because I popped out and maybe the controller was being held a weird way, and it just didn't recalibrate right. Uh, but it's um, about a thirty-five-ish, forty-dollar uh, piece. Uh, so if you had the Gear VR and Chilla, I think you you said you got the new headset and Ch- uh, uh, Chachi has one too. Uh, this comes with the newer headsets too. So yeah, the the new head you can get the new headset in one of two ways. You can get it without the remote. I'm guessing it's so if you were like yourself and then upgraded your phone a year from now, you don't have to rebuy the remote. Um, it's I think a hundred dollars for the headset, a hundred and twenty with the remote. So you're saving like fifteen bucks by getting the bundle package. But if you already have a remote, kind of makes sense. What'll be interesting is if they build it in where you can have two remotes simultaneously. So if you had two guns. Mm-hmm. You could sit there with two remotes and, and that kind of thing. So I, I've been pretty impressed with it so far. Yeah, absolutely. For, for, for what it costs and what it is. So and it's a nice um, it, it's a nice mix of, of, of games on there. Not absolutely everything that we've found when we've been playing with the Oculus and the Vive at our, our Friends Looking for Group. Uh, but a lot in there. I just saw there was a special last week. I wish I would have jumped on it. They had a, a pack that included um, stop uh, or stop or 
Keep Talking or Everybody Explodes. Is that the game? I keep forgetting the name of it. The bomb game. Keep talking and nobody, keep talking and nobody blows up. Yeah, I think that's it. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not seeing Office Simulator. I'm not seeing uh, I Expect You to Die on here. Uh, but, uh, but, but also those have not had the interface like this with the touch controller. So maybe we'll see at least versions of those uh, that, that will interface with this a little bit better. So we'll see. We'll see. I, I think it's cool. It's, it's a great, still, it's a great introductory platform, I feel like, uh, uh, to a certain point. If you happen to be in that Samsung um, uh, infrastructure or or you got somebody to hand me down the old one, you know, uh, and you can jump on that or you could grab a used S6 to get started. Like you probably you probably get those for a, just only a couple hundred bucks at this point, right? Chilla? What's that? I'm sorry, I missed that. I said you can probably get an S6 for only a couple hundred bucks pretty, yeah, pretty easily. Yeah. Yeah, and you can pick them up. I, I was actually looking around because the one thing that I miss about that device um, is the IR sensor on it, so you can mm-hmm. control TVs and whatnot from I keep, it. I keep accidentally changing my TV. Uh, <laughs> with and, and, and you, can, you can find it on things like Gazelle and, and even probably your local. What do we have, like Ninja Entertainment or whatnot? Mm-hmm. Pick up a device. Pretty talking cheap. about the Galaxy S6. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can get one of those for around a hundred and fifty to two hundred dollars on Swappa. That's not bad. Cool. That's not bad. And under a hundred bucks to get the headset and uh, you know, 30, 30 to forty bucks for the controller and you have VR. And and I was I was saying before the show, I'm really impressed with how good it looks, to be honest. Um, you know, for just phone graphics and you're looking around. And again, it's not gonna be uh, as high end as as the main Oculus or a Vive or anything like that. It's not as sensitive. But man, it is decent. It is good, it is fun. It, it's fun. You know, and and I, I definitely recommend that if you really want an introductory thing uh, like that, you know, and, until all this daydream and everything else gets going. So, I, and I'm hoping stuff like daydream, like we talked about in previous weeks, kind of open that opens that up, so you don't like I got to get a Samsung phone, you know, that'll be a little bit more. And of course, there's Google Cardboard, but there's nothing as high end as what we're seeing with the Gear VR because it is that Oculus technology. It does have a gaming platform that's a little deeper um, and has more um, interface than what a Google Cardboard does. Although Google Cardboard is a fantastic introductory thing for the rest of us, too. So, there you go. This is so easy to get into VR these days, in comparison. Will, I almost called you the other yes, name, because it's not that show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what's your What's your awesome thing of the week? Well, it, I, 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 I'm always a little torn about the awesome thing of the week uh, this week, because... First, I was going to talk about the the essential phone that they announced, the Andy Rubin announced as essential phone, but I figured that's more news and I don't know anything about it. Um, and then I was going to talk about the uh, Intel i9 series that they announced. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, the thing is, like, I'm probably never going to buy one of those, even though I do love building computers. But like, you know, don't have $2,000 is always a problem, right? Um, so, so what I'm going to do is, uh, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, there's a little bit of a cheat, I will admit. Okay. So this, this thing right here I have in my hand is my awesome thing of the week. Okay. And what it is, it's an iPhone six. It's like a rose gold iPhone six. Okay. Ooh. Pretty. <laughs> does it match I, your eyes? It does match my eyes. It brings out the joy. Um, <laughs> so I was using Android for quite a while. Mm-hmm. I was uh, I was uh, jumping kind of from uh, carrier to carrier. I used Republic Wireless, Google Fi. I had a Nexus 5X and then a Nexus 6P for quite a while there. And um, finally, I, I got to the point where I realized how much I missed having an iPhone. And it didn't help that like my, my Nexus 6P was dying constantly. Like the battery was absolutely crapping out at just halfway through the day, wouldn't hold a charge, would go down to about 40% and then shut off. Nothing but problems. And I realized I miss having an iPhone. I miss being in that ecosystem and I miss using that product. So here I am back to an iPhone 6, which I had. I had all along, but I couldn't use because I w- none of the networks supported it. Back on Verizon, got an iPhone 6. And I can't tell you how happy I've been over the past couple of weeks to have this phone back. It's crazy. Just, just, it's, it, this 
iPhone 6 works better for me than the Nexus 6P did. And I understand some people prefer that ecosystem. They prefer that phone. But this phone, for me, is awesome. And I'm very happy to have it. So that's my thing. What, what is it about it? The interface, the usage, or like the smoothness? Like, you know, what, it's what? it's it's so much smoother. I feel like the touchscreen is more more receptive and more accurate. Mm-hmm. And this is something that I've always noticed about iPhones versus Android phones. The audio quality is actually better. When I plug in headphones or connect to Bluetooth, the audio quality I get off of my iPhone is better than the Android phones that hmm. I had. Hmm. So I'm just I'm thrilled to pieces to have an iPhone 6 again. And just a 6. It's just a 6. Of course, I would like to upgrade to the 6S or the 7, and eventually I will. But the fact of the matter is I am very, very thrilled to be an iPhone user again. Well, welcome back to the fold. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, you bet. <laughs> that's awesome. That's great. It, they can finally play nice with my iPad again, and yeah, and, and it's a you know you you really like you 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 dived into the other side. You you had two phones with it. It's not like you had it for six weeks and said nope. You know, right? Like, you like you deep dived with it and, and came back, it, and and it was at least a few years. Mm-hmm. So, and you know what? If that's too much of a cheat, I got this little thing that goes on the back of my phone called a pop socket, and it it's, <laughs> see this does this, and then you push it in, and then you can and like clip it on stuff, and it's got clip you can hang your phone on, and it's really fun to play with, and see see how it kind of wiggles around. God, that's therapeutic. <laughs> it's really super great. So this is ten dollars uh, on Amazon, and they have a million different um, different pop designs. Socket. So pop socket, go check that out. Check it out. All right, uh, we got plenty <laughs> of stories here. Like you say, I, I don't think we have a lot of time to get into a lot of these, so we'll, we'll pick some best ofs here. Uh, but in the meantime, hey, shout out to our friends. Uh, we're going to get that sweet, sweet pizza, sh- pizza shot here in a moment. It's Slice on Broadway at SliceOnBroadway.com. It's what, uh, you know, we're, this, is, this is what we put up there to make people jealous that they didn't come in the studio tonight. Uh, so uh, thank you to our good friends. Supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. SliceOnBroadway.com right here on Broadway along the tracks in Beachview to the PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, and as well as Main Street down in Carnegie, PA. Uh, so, you know, thanks for supporting us and, uh, with, with, with pizza. It, it, it fuels the show, like literally fuels the show. It keeps us through these uh, uh, late Tuesday nights when we're recording uh, a lot of these podcasts. So thank you so much to them. Check them out. Okay, uh, we have, I'm going to pick one or two here from the uh, 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 fan submission stuff. Uh, these are not happy stories. These are not awesome stories, Brandon. Why are you giving us sad <laughs> stuff? <laughs> 30, 36 million Android smartphones may be infected with malware. Hey, Will, you dodged a bullet. Yeah, jumped in right at the right time. Just just set that on fire. Put some thermite strap into the phone and toss it out the window. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> uh, PlayStation 3 production officially ends in Japan also, Brandon says. What's that? I'll be if you do the thermite get it on video for us oh absolutely absolutely <laughs> oh, yeah. that's a, remember, <laughs> no, no. remember when rob blew up his, his blackberry that was great um <laughs> i played, no, I, I already sold it on swap <laughs> <laughs> uh of course playstation 3 production officially ends in japan i didn't know that they were still going they do they usually hold on to those old playstations for a while so um there's also a great story uh, uh chris whitlatch is always keeping us up on some good production and vr stories I uh, just want to shout out that, again, these are on the uh, Facebook group, uh, so we don't really have much to get real deep into it. But uh, Creators Lab returns for 2017 VR for good with Oculus, some cool stuff that they're doing there. Uh, we've had discussions with him in the past about the charity water VR experiences and everything and, and some of the work that's being done with that. Also, there's a great article I re- recommend. Uh, the Hollywood Reporter put one out about Star Wars unsung heroes finally share their stories. Like old, these are old people that that like fully and, and worked on things. There was another podcast that mentioned how how they did um, the the steps for for Chewbacca, and mm-hmm. they apparently took them out. I think Twit was talking about this this week. Um, so if you notice, if it now now you'll notice because at least some of you out there are going to be OCD about this. Uh, I, I probably will be. Uh, uh, apparently. Chewie doesn't make any footsteps in any of the movies. Huh. So, so you know what you know what I think that might have been. There's a podcast called "I Was There Too," mm-hmm. and they had Peter Mayhew on this uh, this past week's episode. And I think that, that might be it. coming from that. I'm not sure. They had I, I think there was somebody in the studio at Twit that was that was like an old Foley artist for them. 
that they uh, had a conversation uh, with and they, and they were talking about that kind of stuff. So, uh, Missy, you shared this one and I thought this was interesting, you know, having recently tried snorkeling for the first time. Um, but there is a, if this loads up here, a pretty cool scuba, uh, floating tank. So you don't have to take a, a, a tank with you or it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not even a tank. Is it, no, it's, it's just super snorkeling. Here's, here's what it is. It is a mini compressed tank that sits in that little floaty above the, the water. Mm-hmm. I, I think provides two hours worth of compressed air. So it's the same thing that you would use if you were scuba diving, but it doesn't require the massive tank on the back of your back. I love the image and, of her lugging the tank. And, yeah, that's, that was one of my favorite things too. Um, so it provides a little floaty thing that stays to the top of the water and you have an air hose that connects down. So essentially you get the feel of going scuba diving I'm I'm sorry I'm going uh, snorkeling Mm -hmm. with the lightweight and just being able to move around but you can go deeper than snorkeling with this nice little travel function option so it's it's kind of an interesting take on it the other thing I liked is it's kind of a self-serve little buoy so Mm -hmm. if there is something that something would happen and somebody would need to know where to find you. It's this nice little floating flag, literally a flag that people would be able to spot and see to kind of come to your aid and rescue if, if need be. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. I like that. I like, I like that. I like the, I like the, go ahead. It, 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 so the, and I didn't read the article, but I did see the video and it looked pretty awesome. So is it, it's obviously doesn't have a tank of compressed air. So is it compressing air on the fly? No, there, there is, there is a small, tank of compressed air but it's it's literally okay. like this big and i think it fits in that floaty device so it's not on your your purse i don't believe i think it's in the floaty device and then there's an so air it's hose still that comes a down. tank of air yeah hmm. it's still a tank of air and that's why it provides up to two hours i believe hmm. um you can charge it so that it compresses the air i've it might not be compressed air like in a tank it might compress it on the fly type of situation mm-hmm. i just know that it's two hours worth of compressed air that functions that way through the through the device and like it has a charge and go option that you can charge it up before you go and then literally pop it in your car and go to the beach you're good to go awesome awesome i like it all right let's get into uh some of the stories we have here lined up chilla what do you want to what do you want to hit on this week um so here's what so just because i i'm not sure who would use this and why um, maybe you guys in your social media endeavors would understand it a little better than I would. So, uh, so Twitter gave a new DM feature, which if you remember last year, you know, or, or in, in recent times, they, they eliminated the, the character limit on DMS. They, um, let, they let you open your DMS to non followers. They created kind of an inbox thing for people to try to use DMS as a way to, to provide services like computer troubleshooting, blah, 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 blah. So there's been a lot of things going on in DMs. Now, if you have your DMs open, any D, anytime you get a DM from someone you don't follow, it goes into a request bucket. Hmm. And only uh, until you respond to it, it doesn't come into your DM stream. And but once you have started to communicate with someone via via DM that didn't follow you or that you don't follow, it then automatically just puts it in the the DM typical stream with everything else. So I, I'm just not. I guess you're just going to have this DM request box full of DMs that you ignored. But I just can't figure out why. What the purpose is? I have an idea. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well. <laughs> so um, let's say that you are running the Twitter of a, uh, a company that provides a service. Um, you're going to be getting a lot of DMs that are, you know, angry garbage, and you're going to get DMs that are requests for help. You can sift through those in your request bucket and respond to the ones that you want and ignore the ones that you don't. Okay. At least that, that was my first thought. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm looking at it more look at uh, Facebook messaging. If I'm not friends with someone on Facebook, I can message them and it sends them a message, but it sits in a secure little area because you're not friends with them. It doesn't pop into your direct like message feed. Mm -hmm. So 
it is separate. And it's nice because, again, some of the work that we do, I get a bunch of, like, we'll just set a bunch of spam, a bunch of, you know, people talking just whatever they want to be talking about that's not necessarily relevant and I don't want to have anything to do with it. And I can go through those messages I can see who's messaging me and it gives me a little snippet of what they're saying. So I can click on it and I can see, oh, okay, this is somebody that I actually want to talk to. Um, you know, I met them at a mixer function or something like that, that I did. Um, we're not friends, but they, they did reach out because, you know, business opportunity or whatever. And it gives me an option that I can kind of tag that on the fly. So I, I think that that's more the functionality with it is it used to be that you couldn't DM somebody unless you were friends with them. Mm -hmm. Which was difficult. Even even then, you it's still kind of that way unless you choose to open, like you set your DMs to open. E exactly. Um, however, yeah. it gives a little more. Y you have a peephole in the door instead of just not knowing who's on the other side of it and so not opening not, it. So so basically, what what that does is it, it it keeps your DMs from being unusable from volume, if mm -hmm. that's a problem. So it, it, it's a function thing, right? So um, absolutely. No, no. Day-to-day -day use? No, you're probably not going to use this. But but you're right. It, it, it's that bigger thing when you're a service, when you are you're, you're have a little bit more attention coming your way. Yeah. Again, I, I think it's better for like business to business, mm -hmm. business to mm -hmm. peer type of stuff, um, more so than, than it would be for any other functionality. Yep. But I think, it's, I think it's something that if it's done and used properly, I, I think could be beneficial. So, so somebody somebody request this. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> it, it, you, I, I think I think both you guys out there um, would be interested in this. I, I thought I was curious. T Mobile always um, innovating uh, cell carriage. Apparently, um, wish I could use you when I'm in <laughs> the middle of a field in the middle of nowhere. T Mobile, because you got some really interesting things going on. They just uh, this is one that caught my eye. They just uh, announced a digits plan, so it's flexible. And it's it's kind of comparable, I guess, to what Google has been doing with things. So you can have multiple lines on one phone, or you can have multiple phones with one number. Huh. It's launching May 31st. And this is, of course, the kind of thing where I think you would probably use in business, or you're just a device junkie, or you're chilla. And you have everything, <laughs> you know, um, or or you're a journalist, a tech journalist that has all the phones you're testing in the world and just uh, can't manage all the numbers to make them usable. Um, you know, I think about all the devices that sit in front of me in the office that ring every time my wife calls me from the studio uh, to ask me a question. And could you imagine if there are those, all the phones everywhere that you left around the house ringing? It's like it would be like if the old phone system back in the day. You know, you had one phone number rang everything in the house, right? I'm, I'm kind of a fan of this because it's kind of like when I was able to get more than one Twitter account that I could log into on the Twitter app on my phone mm -hmm. because I've got my regular phone number. I have business phone numbers for a couple of different businesses that people are reaching out to me. Um, my question is, does it show you which number it's ringing in from? Because like, I know that I have mine set up that when somebody calls for bite me, for instance, it rings up bite me is, is what I see on my display because that's how I have it set up. So I know that when I'm getting a phone call, if it comes up bite me, it's somebody who's called that line. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's handy because again, I don't want to be carrying around six different devices in order to, to make that work. Right, right. And we, we, we kind of cheat that by using um, Google Voice right now, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I have I have, I have a business line and that if it rings through and if it looks a certain way on my phone, I was like, oh, that's coming from Google Voice. It's probably a business line. I'm in off hours. We're not doing that right now, right? Or, or I will get those messages. I will get those messages in, in my inbox, for instance, and be able to handle it from there. So, and if anything ever happened, I, you know, I don't want my personal number out there. I want to kind of split those. It, it's a good way to do that. So, um, I like it. I like that it's the option. And I like that T-Mobile keeps um, kind of pushing the boundaries. They have to stay relevant out there. So, all right. Um, Chilla, I want to touch on this one story real quick. Uh, I know it's, it, I, you know, it's partial video games, but it's, it's, it's I think it's more tech than anything. Um, I read uh, uh, basically another version of this about Apple and Nintendo. Okay. 
Um, so, so, you, so go okay, ahead. go ahead. No, you go ahead. You see your story. So, so I was interested. It was interesting to me to, I read this article today and it, it was about Nintendo switch is going to continue to have capacity or yeah, capacity for new devices because of component re- constraints imposed from Apple orders. Yep. And, it, and, and it's, it's around flash and some other, some other components, but I, I thought it was an interesting take. And I, I guess I can't wrap my head around, wow, they can't source more NAND flash memory. So, so well, here's the problem. When you talk about flash memory and components, you're, you're talking about things that are manufactured very specifically and from very um, finite and rare materials. So I, I think Apple has ramped up so much with their, their iPhone demand that they kind of took over the manufacturing industry and there's just not enough bandwidth out there for Nintendo to also have a hit and get that supply. I, yeah, I guess I. It's just like I, I'm surprised they would wouldn't have thought about that before creating the design. Well, I because no, there's, there's more than just Fox. I mean, there's more than Foxconn. There's other distributors. There's other manufacturers, and that's something I think Apple takes definitely into consideration. It before is. It is, but also production. Uh, also, not all manufacturers are created equal. Is a problem. Um, yeah, I mean. Yeah, I I've had this discussion with with uh, one of my uncles is an engineer with a, a company and deals with manufacturing, and he'll he's he's had to go to China and and look at you know and basically make sure they're doing it right you know and, and it's the weirdest little things so I'll throw an entire you know production cycle off and and delay everything, uh, so now imagine that with these very specific components for you know how many millions of iphones and how many millions of of nintendo switches plus you know i think in a lot of those cases that's not the only thing that they're manufacturing there right i mean this is a this is an industry that um hard drives are in short order because of a flood in 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 some country in in you know south asia right or 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 flash shortages because of an earthquake in this country right like that's how not flimsy but that's how 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 constrained those are like one thing like that kills that 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 industry and kills supply chain it's just it's very it's a very tenuous thing so an apple an apple just takes over with their stuff and and i wonder like if a competitor comes to market with i mean they're probably not they're not gonna have the game catalog but if a competitor comes to market i mean this could really hurt Oh, absolutely, absolutely. If people keep especially doing... come come Christmas, right? If you're if, right, if it's if it's I want a switch or I want the next Xbox, and there's an Xbox on the shelf and no switch, right, right. I mean, that's you're not going to get that. You, typically, you're not going to get that other device till till the following Christmas. <laughs> it's, a, it's a chicken and egg problem with manufacturing that 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 a lot of them have to deal with, right? So, yeah, absolutely. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Maybe. Maybe we'll all have our switches by Christmas. Who knows? Who knows? So, or we'll just play VR in the meantime. <laughs> all right. Hey, we got to get out of here. But, uh, Will Rutherford, thank you for dropping in on the show today. Yeah, man. You bet. What, what, tell people uh, what they can go check out and hear that uh, actual voice of yours. On. Well, you can head on over to panelriot.com. It's my uh, podcast about comic books. There's a dog barking. She's not on the show, but my cat is. He's laying here with me. Um, <laughs> yeah, go to panelriot.com and uh, check it out. We've got audio there. And uh, basically anywhere where there's podcasts, you can find it, including the Sorgatron Media Network. Um, and uh, there should be a new episode up when this episode goes up. There you go. Because as soon as I get off the line with you, I'm going to edit and put up a new episode. So. I didn't. What was what was the last uh, gold con or Patreon content? It was like Batman reading something. Batman reading comments on wholesome recipes. Yes, I, I still need to go listen to that one. <laughs> I've, I, done, I, I've done two. I've done two sessions of that so far, and um, I'm probably going to record another one today. And um, I, I don't want to give a lot away, uh, but I do want you to give me my, your money. So uh, <laughs> go to panorai.com, click on the Patreon button, and uh, let's just say I want to take you for a ride. There you go. And, of course, John Chichilla, 
He talks about gadgets and stuff on his Twitter at Chilla as well as ChillaTech.net. Yeah, and come check it out. Come check out the awesome tips on Facebook, uh, Instagram, oh. on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, uh, pretty much all the social medias, including uh, LinkedIn. Yep. First one up is about the Samsung uh, S8. So, so there's that. We have an Android one. The rest are going to be Apple. Don't worry. Uh, so, uh, mm-hmm. but no, those are uh, yeah, those are all in the can, and they should be. Uh, we're probably going to do two or three a week uh, and just get them out there because because uh, iOS ten. Uh, so some good tips in there. Good, good, helpful, hey, yeah. helpful things. I have one other thing mm. and you know, it's, it's a ways out. I'll admit it's a ways out for this, but I just made the decision today and I'm pretty excited about it. The extra life marathon uh, is taking place this year and it's, it's not till like November, but the fact of the matter is I am still doing it. So you can go to bit.ly slash LB extra and donate today. Any amount of money helps. Everything goes to the children's miracle network and uh, it's going to be a real good time. Awesome. Go check it out. And of course, at Sorgatron on the Twitter, SorgatronMedia.com is where all of our podcasts are, our good friends. It was a very naked week this week. Uh, uh, Scarehouse talked about naked haunted houses, and that was weird. I just realized this is in the shot. I, I took off my pants during the course of this show. Does so there's that count? That, there's that too. There's that too. <laughs> I've been very pantsless in the studio as well since nobody was in. So that means pants it's is completely optional. Pittsburgh. It's very hot in Pittsburgh, yes. Uh, <laughs> so uh, check out everything awesomecast.net. Subscribe everywhere, patreon.com slash awesomecast. And uh, thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been an awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.